Hi, today we'll be covering collaborative filtering. I'll walk you through the concept, types of collaborative filtering and how it works. Then I'll walk you through my Python code that uses SVD to build a recommender system. And we'll also be understanding the concept in a spreadsheet. Today's video is inspired by Unfold Data Science, Analytics Vidya, Medium and Towards Data Science. Let's begin. According to Wikipedia, a recommender system is a subclass of information filtering system that seeks to predict the rating or preference a user would give to an item. In a very general way, recommender systems are algorithms aimed at suggesting relevant items to users, items being movies to watch, text to read, products to buy, or anything else depending on industries. Recommender systems are utilized in a variety of areas and are most commonly recognized as playlist generators for videos and music services like Netflix, YouTube, and Spotify. And product recommenders for services such as Amazon and content recommenders for social media platforms such as Facebook and Twitter. What is collaborative filtering? Let's understand this with an example. If person A likes three movies, say Interstellar, Inception, and Predestination, and person B likes Inception, Predestination, and The Prestige, then they have almost similar interest. We can say that with some similar certainty that A should like The Prestige and B should like The Interstellar. The collaborative filtering algorithm uses user behavior for recommending items. This is one of the most common used algorithms in the industry as it is not dependent on any additional information. Collaborative filtering can be broadly classified into two, memory-based and model-based. Memory-based methods, also known as neighborhood-based, consist of two methods, user-based and item-based collaborative filtering. In user-based, Similar users which have similar ratings for similar items are found and then target user's rating for the item which target user has never interacted is predicted. Let's say for example the target user is Bob. So the steps involved in this technique are specify the target user which is Bob in our example. Find similar users who have similar ratings to Bob. Extract the items which Bob never interacted. Pred predict the ratings of unobserved items for Bob. If the predicted ratings are ab above the threshold, then recommend them to Bob. These are the steps involved in user-based collaborative filtering. On the other hand, item-based models find similar items to items which target user already rated or interacted. The steps we take in this technique are specify the target user which would be Bob again for this example. Find similar items which have similar ratings with items Bob already rated. Predict the ratings for similar items. If the predicted ratings are above the threshold then recommend them to Bob. Memory-based approach directly works with values of recorded interactions, assuming no model and are essentially based on nearest neighbor's approach. For example, find the closest users from a user of interest and suggest the most popular items among these users. Model-based approaches assume an underlying generative model that explains the user-item interaction and try to discover it in order to make new predictions. How it works is, it tries to predict the rating provided by the user based on existing data. It fits a machine learning model on that data, the data being the user item interaction matrix. So this is the baseline of all collaborative filtering approaches. The memory-based methods are simple and easy to explain and interpret, as well as easy to, easy to implement and apply. However, all collaborative filtering methods suffer from sparsity in ratings table. 
What is sparsity? When most of the elements in the item matrix table are zero or unrated. This is what we see in everyday scenario. Not everyone rates the movies. Not all movies watched are rated. When we buy items at Amazon.com, we usually don't rate all the products bought. Only some products are rated. This is why in the user item interaction matrix, we'll see lot of elements as zero. Hence, this matrix is called sparse matrix. Another drawback of collaborative filtering is when rating table size increases, the, exec the execution time needed to calculate ratings for unobserved areas rises quadratically because of the nature of the similarity functions, cosine, Pearson, etc. There are various methods in practice to deal with large sparse matrix such as SVD which is singular value decomposition and PCA which is principal component analysis. We will discuss SVD in this video. SVD is a mathematical way of factorizing a large matrix into smaller matrices represented as U sigma V transpose. More information on SVD can be found on the web. Now let's take a look on how the recommender system works using collaborative filtering. We'll first see the approach in a spreadsheet using user-based collaborative filtering and then I'll show you the Python code using surprise package to implement model-based collaborative filtering. Here we see that there are seven users and six movies and each user has rated some movies. Our goal is to find whether we can recommend a movie to a user based on this matrix. We will be implementing the user-based collaborative filtering method. First, let's calculate the average rating that each user gives to the movies. We will be using the Excel function average. Note that no rating is not zero rating. Zero rating means that the movie was really bad. And if we replace blanks by zeros, it will shift our averages. So no rating is not zero rating. Our next step will be to draw a correlation matrix. For this, for this we'll be using the data anal analysis feature of Excel. In the data tab, click on the data analysis and here find correlation and click OK. Next you have to select the area for which you have to find the correlation. It should be grouped by rows. Now we have the correlation and we have the means. Now, our next step is to actually find the estimated rating. For that, let's say we want to predict for the others movie and say we want to predict the rating for Lana because that's the person who doesn't have a rating. Okay, so let's predict. Now the average rating that Lana gives is 3. So let's write that here. The mean rating for uh, everyone, we can get it from here. The similarity is the correlation. So how is Lana related to everyone else? that we can get from here. Now what is the app, uh, usual movie rating that everyone has given to this movie? Let's get that from here. We'll replace for here because it's an arithmetic calculation. We'll be replacing blanks by zeros 
don't confuse it with you know anything else now the adjustment will be uh, the difference of uh, mo movie rating and the mean now if the movie rating is zero that's not considered as a, as a zero rating it's a no rating so there won't be an adjustment here here it will be this minus this and let's pull this down and again because this is zero so we won't be giving it any rating now absolute correlation will be uh, the absolute value of this correlation now because we have all the values in positive so this will also be positive but if you still um, need the function it's abs and then the number okay now total adjustment will be your sum product it will be the sum product of the adjustment field and the similarity matrix and divided by the sum of the absolute correlation so that will be your total adjusted value uh, the final rating will be sum of mean and the total adjusted value so here it comes to be 3.17 so Lana would probably give 3.17 rating to the others movie. Next, we'll be implementing model-based collaborative filtering in Python. As I explained earlier, I'll be using the Python package called Surprise. This package has SVD, singular value decomposition to factorize data set to uh, is needed for analysis of uh, input data accuracy to test the accuracy of the model and train ten test split to split the data into training and testing next i have loaded uh, my data my data set ml 100k into data variable i will then be using the train test split to split the data into 80 20 ratio in train set and test set files uh, then I initialize my SVD into model variable and I fit the train set into this model. My model is now ready for predictions. I will then uh, make predictions using the test set and test the accuracy of my predictions. Here in this case, I've used root mean square error and the accuracy has come out to be 93.6%, which is very good. Uh, we can find predictions, uh, individual ratings using uh, user ID and movie ID as input. So if I use user ID as uh, 456 and item ID as 135, uh, and when we make the prediction, we see that the estimated predicted value is 4.01. We can change the movie and the user ID and predict the rating again for that specific movie and user. Now, how is this estimation used? If this rating is high and if the movie is not watched by the user, then we can recommend this movie to that user. So this is the use of model based collaborative filtering. I've used SVD. We can also use principal component analysis, fast AI, K nearest neighbors, etc. I hope you have enjoyed today's video. Thank you.